Hello, welcome to Free School Exam Preparation. Today we are going to talk about Cambridge IGCSE Computer Science 0478, and this is for the syllabus from 2023 to 2025. Today's unit is Unit 5.1, the Internet and the World Wide Web. So we will first talk about the difference between the Internet and the three Ws, and then we'll explain some key terms such as URL, HTTP, and also web browsers. Then we'll um, talk about how the users can visit websites. And finally, we will discuss about the functions of cookies. OK, so what is Internet? So Internet is a collection of interconnected networks. So it's an abstract idea. You can't touch Internet, right? Although you are using the Internet. So the three Ws stand for World Wide Web. So it's part of the Internet. So by using the three Ws, the users are able to visit the websites. However, by using the Internet, we can do many, many more other things. So for example, we can use the Internet to receive emails and to chat with my friends online and also can play games online and can have conference online and even like you can use the Internet to watch my video. So um, the Internet uses this TCP and IP protocols. So the protocols uh, means a set of rules. So if you want to transmit things by using the Internet, you have to follow these transmission protocols. And we've talked about IP before. So we say uh, we have this IPv4 or IPv6 address, right? So that means if a location um, wants to be located by the users. So the address needs to satisfy the requirement specified by the internet protocols. Okay, so uh, for, for the three Ws, we just mentioned users can use it to visit the websites. So uh, how can users uh, visit websites? So we'll use web browsers. Some examples are Google Chrome, uh, Microsoft Edge, and also the Firefox. So um, also we will talk about something about HTTP protocols and also HTML. So HTML actually was mentioned in lecture one, I believe. So when we talk about the hexadecimal digits, right? So they can um, they are used to represent the color in the HTML. So the web browsers need to translate HTML and to display the contents to users. Okay, we'll talk more details uh, about those terms in the next couple um, slides. Okay, so URL. So URL is a text address to allow users to access websites. So here I have some examples. So the first one is the IGCSE official website, right? So uh, let's just take a look at this in more details. So this one, HTTP, is a protocol. Okay, and then we have this colon and double slash. So here, www here until the org. This whole thing is a website address. Okay, and then we have this slash here. So from here, program uh, programs and qualification, all these kind of things, you can think about they are paths. Right, and finally. Here will be the file name. Okay, another example here, right? So this is a website for the undergraduate study in Cambridge University. So here is the protocol. Right, so we know the protocol is HTTPS. We'll just explain this in the next slide. And then we have colon and double uh, slash. And this one, the whole thing here is this website address. Okay, and then we don't have pass, but we have the here is the file name. Okay, so let's take a look at this website in more details. So first we have this um, www, so I just write here, right? So we have this three w's. Okay, um, and then we are going to have the domain name. Okay, so the domain for this website is a Cambridge International. And then we have this 
org. So that is the domain type. So this is for the Cambridge International Organization. Of course, um, there are different um, domain types. So for example, it can be com, right? Um, and also can be, what else? So it can be com and it can be edu, right? So that means it's for school, this is for company. Okay, so for this one, so we have this www here and this UK, so this shows the country code. So now we know what is URL. Okay, let's take a look at the next term, which is HTTP. So HTTP stands for uh, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. So it's also a set of rules. So that means when you transfer files by using the internet, you have to follow this HTTP protocol. So the detailed contents of this protocol is out of the scope. If you are interested, you can just um, search this by yourself. So the next one is called Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. So usually we'll see a small S here, or you can see a green paddock right in your address bar. So what does it do? So actually you can see this image. So that means we have this HTTP protocol, right? And then we have another layer, which is security. So this security can be done on either the socket layer or the transport layer. So still, these two layers are out of scope. Um, so if you study, um, I think, university level of internet, so you will be able to understand what are the layers. Okay, so this one has the data encrypted. So if, that means if it transfers the data by using this HTTPS, it will be safer than the HTTP. Okay, so then we're going to talk about web browsers. So this is a very important concept. So what web browsers allow users to access the web pages. So I think everyone's familiar with web browsers, right? So it has lots of functions you can use. So here are some functions. So this one here, uh, let me just change the color to make it more stand out. So this one, actually this is um, um, like Firefox, right? So this part allows you to type the URL. So this is called address bar. And also we have bookmarks history. So I think you are already familiar with this. So if you click on the book button, uh, bookmark button, so you can see all the websites that you like to um, like keep as a favorite there. Or some of the bookmarks can go to this bookmark bar here. So for example, on this um, uh, screenshot here, so we have these three, right, are also bookmarked. Okay. And also, it can record the user's visiting history. So like what time, which website you have visited, right? So this is for the history part. And it allows multiple tabs. So you can see here, we have two tabs open. So the first tab um, is used to visit one web website. The second tab is, to use, uh, is used to visit another website. Of course, you can open more tabs. Okay, and then it will allow cookies. So we'll talk about cookies, um, I think, at the end of this today's lecture. And the, finally, it has this navigation tool. So what are navigation tools? So for example, this one. So that means go back to the previous visited page, right? And then we have um, this one. So it means go to the next one. Okay, so um, this web browsers can translate the HTML from the websites and also display the results to the users. We'll just take a look at this in a moment. So um, here shows how we use web browser to visit websites. There are the, uh, some key terminologies that are right here. So we've talked about the URL. We've talked about HTML and web browser, and this is a web server that we want to visit um, and to get the websites from them. And then finally, we are the users. So what is DNS? It stands for Domain Name System or Domain Name Server. So you can think about the DNS as a database. So this one has the URL and also the IP address as a pair. 
So basically, what it does is if you give a URL to the DNS, it will tell you what IP address is associated with this URL. Well, it's kind of like the telephone book, right? So I think in like many years ago, we used telephone book. So we have someone's name, and then this is going to show this person's phone number. Okay, so how can we visit website, right? So the first step we need to do is to type the URL in the address bar. I think everyone's familiar with the process, and now we just need to um, write this out in steps, right? So type URL in the address bar. So where's the address bar? It's in the web browser of the browser. Okay, so browser now knows which address the user, want, uh, which URL the user wants to visit. Let's say if I just type www dot, um, like the one we just talked about, Cambridge, let me just copy this. Um, so I think that's called Cambridge International dot org, right? So I will just write this. So we'll just type this, Cambridge International dot org. Okay, so the um, browser will send this URL to a DNS. So browser, so here's user, right? So browser sends this URL to a DNS. And to ask for the IP address of this uh, organization. And then this DNS will check in its own database and to see if he can find, uh, it can find out the IP address. If it can find it out, then the DNS will send this IP address back to the browser. However, this DNS may not contain the information about this URL. So this DNS will talk to another DNS. Let's call this DNS1. So this DNS will send this URL, so this one, to another DNS, let's call it DNS2, and to see if DNS2 has this um, IP address associated with the URL or not. It's kind of like you talk to a friend and say, hey, do you have Lisa's phone number? And then uh, he said, no, but I can help you to find it out. And your friend asks another person, hey, do you have Lisa's phone number, right? So you can just keep asking. So the same thing, so if DNS has this IP address, and then it will just let DNS1 know. However, if DNS2 still doesn't have this IP address, so it will talk to another friend, say DNS3, hey, do you have this person's phone number? So they can just keep going. If they try several DNS but still can't find this, so you may receive something about 404, right? So that means the address is not found. Okay, anyway, so let's assume that DNS2 finds this IP address associated with the URL. So the DNS2 will send the IP address to DNS1. Because DNS2 doesn't know about the browser. Think about the friend, right? DNS is a friend of DNS1, but it may not be the friend of this browser. Okay, so what will, so that's step four. Um, so what will the DNS1 do? DNS1 will do two things. So the first is DNS1 is going to tell the browser, yes, I find her phone number, right? So here we go. So we'll send the IP address to the browser. And also DNS1 will write down this information in its own database. So next time if someone asks for this person's phone number again, so the DNS1 will not need to keep asking around. It can just find it out in its own database. So we say DNS1 adds the URL and also the IP address pair um, into its own database, its database. I think that makes sense, right? So if you find someone's phone number and then, but you didn't know that before, so you can put this into your phone book as well. Okay, so what will browser do? So browser now knows the IP address associates with, associated with this um, URL. So browser will talk to the URL or the server directly. So B 
BR, uh, browser will use this IP address, right, and to locate the web server, which is the web server of this organization. Okay, and then what does browser um, tell web server? Said, I want to visit your website. Can we establish a communication? Right, so here is to establish communication with the web server. And the web server receives this request, right? So here is request, request to establish. And the web server receives this request. And it looks at this browser, or it looks um, like the um, origin from, um, like the origin of the request, right? and looks okay. So web server agrees to establish this communication. So what it will do is it will send the web pages to the browser. So that means web server sends the required web page to the browser. Okay. So browser now receives this web page, right? But can user understand it? No, because this web page is written in the HTML. So if you just look at this web page right now, so you will see lots of codes. And then, you know, you, you, you can't see some web pages like the one, you know, we are often uh, visiting, right? So the browser needs to do something. So the browser will translate this HTML written web page. And now it can display um, to the users. So the user will be able to see the like a normal web page. So that's the process how the users retrieve web pages from a web server. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at the next one, which is cookies. So what is cookie? Cookies are small text file sent from the web server to users. So sometimes when you use a web browser, you might receive message, okay, do you accept cookies from the website, right? So you say yes or no. So here is one example of cookies. So you can see actually it has a name value, right, or name, value. So it's kind of like the key data pairs, right? So this is used to track, save, and personal, personalize the user information. So we just explain this um, in more detail soon. So there are two types of cookies. So the first one is called session cookie. The second one is called persistent cookie, or it can be called permanent cookie. So what does session cookie mean? So session cookie will disappear after you close your browser. So that means when you visit a website, the server will send you something, right? But this um, file sent from the server will be stored in memory. So we know the memory is volatile. So that means after you close something, it will disappear. So that's for the session cookie. And the second one is called persistent cookie. So this one is even after you close your browser, so next day you turn on your uh, computer, you open the web browser, you are still able to retrieve information from the persistent cookies. So let me give you one example, like when we use session cookie, when we use persistent cookie. So think about some online shopping website, right? So when you go to the shops, um, like the website, so you say, I want to add this item. So you say, I want to add the book one, right, into my shopping cart. And also I want to add book two into my shopping cart, right? So you add all the items. So now here we'll show a shopping cart. I don't know how to draw this, something like this, a shopping cart. And you click the button and open the shopping cart. So you will be able to see all the items that you have added. Okay, so now all of a sudden your mom said, okay, dinner is ready, so just turn off your computer. So you turn off. And after a while you turn on your computer and then you go to this website because you haven't finished shopping, right? So you go to the website, click on the shopping cart. 
So there are two situations. The first situation is you still um, can see all the items you have added. So that means it use the persistent cookie. Okay, so the second situation is when you um, open the shopping cart, you can't see anything, right? So it said it's empty. So that means it sends you session cookie. Okay, so now I think you know the difference between those two. So for the persistent cookie or the permanent cookie, so it can be used to store this virtual uh, shopping cart. So that means um, like after a while you open this, you still can see all the items, right? And also it can be used to store your login details. So for example, your username, password, right? So we have this out of uh, field in uh, functions nowadays. So that means they are stored in these um, cookies. And also your personal details. For example, when you do the online shopping, right? So you have used this website before. So now you want to buy things again. So here ask you to, about your shipping address, right? And your name, you know, those kind of things. So sometimes they will come out, right? So this is because those personal details have been um, saved in the persistent cookies. And also it can track your preferences. So for example, if you go to a, a website, it has several languages, right? So you say, okay, I want to choose English. So next time when you visit the website, it will show the English page to you, but not in other languages. So that means the cookies have uh, memorized your preference about the language. And also it can be used to track your internet habits. So for example, if you like to um, buy books, right? So next time you visit uh, some website, so more books or similar types of books will be shown. So this is how the cookies are used to track your behaviors. Okay, so um, that's everything for today's lecture. So we hope you have enjoyed it and wish you good luck with your exam. If you are interested, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Free School Exam Preparation. Thank you.